So it's a sunny morning in Melbourne, Wednesday morning, and I'm about to take you down to Jimmy Rum Distillery in Dramana, not far from Bass and Flinders, which makes stunning gym. And we're gonna have a chat to James McPherson, owner, founder, all around genius of Jimmy Rum, the only rum distillery on the peninsula, and I dare I say, the only rum distillery in Victoria. Let's go and smash this, have a chat to a fascinating guy, look at some fascinating booze, well, delicious booze, try it already. I'm not going to lead you guys in blind. We're going to smash this because the interview for the magical mystery, magical distillery tours of the peninsula. Let's go and do this, people. Let's go and have some fun. Made it down the uh, M11, um, freeway, peninsula, freeway, whatever it is, road, lots of speed dumps, stuff like that, in one piece. I'm actually at Jimmy Rum's distillery now. We're going to go in, we're going to meet Jim himself, ask the difficult questions that you know I always ask, like, um, what are we doing here? And what day is it? So we're going to go in, we're going to bust this interview, ask the questions that need to be asked for you, my people, my people. We're going to nail this. Have a look at this beautiful distillery. It's big, it's got a great menu. You really should get your asses down here, people my people. Fuck you guys go. People my people. Rum Distill has found its way, as we know, all the way down to Jimmy Rum. Here is the man, the genius, the mind-blowing idealist behind the distillery, James McPherson. James, your fan club awaits. <laughs> I don't know about a fan club, but thank you for the intro. <laughs> oh, I'm a fan, I've tried your stuff a couple of times. So the um, really difficult question I have to ask is, who is James McPherson? Who apart is from you? Apart from me. Yeah, well, that's a good start. Uh, who am I? Well, I'm, I'm not originally a rum distiller, that's for sure. I'm not even a hospitality owner. My, my background is shipping. I spent 20 years working in the merchant seafarer, uh, traveling around the world doing all these different things. And then one day I made a joke and said, stuff this, I'm over it. I've done it for 20 years, I'm going to go and make rum. And as you can see from the size of the still behind me, I generally don't do things by half. So we, we jumped in boots and all. You can't be half pregnant. You either do it or you don't. No, exactly. exactly. You're either in the bath or you drive. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I completely get it as an aspirant. You get to fuck it. We're doing it. And we're going to do it boots and all. So yeah. Just jump. You, you can't bungee jump with one foot on the, on the platform. No. You've got to commit. You've got to do it. Yeah. yeah. You've jumped in. Now, you mentioned the fact that you're a merchant human. Seaman. Is there any, like, were you in... 50 metre waves, um, you know, in force, let's, let's 20 um, cyclones battling the elements. Oh, okay, had them, we about to blew it. Like, you know, like um, Scotty from uh, Star Trek. Yeah, and, uh, look, we uh, a little bit, Scotty. You cannot give it any more, Captain, that yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah, no, no, we didn't end up with too much of that. It's all, uh, the shipping industry's been around for a very, very long time. So they've pretty much got it sorted out now. But no, look, definitely seen, um, been as far as down to Antarctica and, spent time in 60, 70, 80 knots of wind and big swells that even the big ship, you, you have to turn your nose into it and just ride it out for a day and then, then move on the next day. So, but yeah, uh, run from cyclones. We've, I've pretty much had a good stab at most things. So Antarctica, that would have been interesting with there. Someone up the front going, oh, that's an iceberg. Stay away from that. That's not an iceberg. That's a whale. Well, luckily it was an ice class ship, so she can handle most most of the ice. Um, and anything that was going to cause us any problems soon pops up on the radar. So they, they tend to drive around them, particularly the ones that are about seven kilometres long. Yeah. Uh, I used to call it the marching of the giants. It was quite majestic as these icebergs were just slowly moving north to be dissolved away. The temptation to put someone out into a boat and grab a bit of ice for the evening scotch or run must have been... <laughs> it would have been pretty fantastic. Uh, quite a few lads did actually go and collect some ice to bring home because we were a dry ship, so there was no alcohol on board. But uh, they did manage to bag some up and put it in, uh, um, in the freezer and take it back to Fremantle where we got off and, uh, yes, had some couple of thousand year old ice cubes in their scotch. That a good conversation mm. though. Mm. Now, or more I... importantly, rum. Yeah, Seafarers right. after all. Yeah, after all, yeah. I kept on telling my... Um my youngest yesterday, what's a pirate's favourite letter? 
And he goes, what is that? And he goes, Arr. Arr. Yes, well, Could we you try and avoid the pirates here. So, yeah. Yes, there's, there's no buccaneering happening around here. Um, you know, I come from North Queensland. I've lived through a couple of cyclones. Um, I can't imagine, apart from the fact you would have been violently seasick, actually running from one out in the open ocean. Well, I mean, you'd, if you'd probably know from being through a few cyclones, they, they come through pretty fast and they're actually quite small, dense weather cells. So for a ship to run from it, it's not that complicated. So we just figure out where it's going and we go the other direction. So um, I've only ever sort of got caught on the outskirts of one as we were running away. It was on a small little rig tender and that was a bit of a bouncy evening. But uh, yeah, it just for about 12 hours, it's uncomfortable and then it passes through. I'm old enough to actually have been in Mackay when Cyclone Ada went through in 1970. Yep. And um, my parents had about three centimetres of fresh air, under, otherwise we would have been swimming out of the house. Oh, wow. My brothers were fishing off the um, front veranda. Nice. So, <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, they're, they're pretty dramatic. Most of my ones that I've been dealing with are off the Western Australian coast, so oh, all up north of Port Hedland, etc. I lived through one in Port Hedland when I was there on Tuckboats. Yeah, and when, when, the, when the clouds curve and they turn that sickly sea, sea sick green, it's going to be, yeah, we're, we're staying put for a while. We're, we're not going to catch that flight out. Yeah, look, it's short and sharp. It's sort of 24 hours of pretty uncomfortable, don't go outside, and then after that, go and, go and see what the carnage was. But a lot of those towns we find are, are, are used to it now. So power lines all go underground. Everything is set up to handle that, that storm as it comes through. Went to Indo, I went up to Tracy, they actually put in a whole lot of camphor laurels. Mm. Bad idea. Camphor laurels are really brittle. Brittle. So they had another cyclone came through and had all these camphor laurels down over Darwin. Oh, no. They had to bring out the chainsaw and start hacking up meter wide trunks because they just literally shattered in the wind. Yep. And yeah, this is the council and we think things through. Yeah. Well, okay. it sounded like a good idea at the time. Okay, you've kind of covered it already. You had a career as a.